Okay, we're going to take one last look here at our uh, cloudy neighbor, Venus. And I think this probably is the most important section of all because uh, we can sort of uh, glean some lessons uh, from our neighbor planet. Remember, Venus is just about the exact same um, size and uh, mass and density of the Earth, but it turned out wildly different. So let's find out why. First of all, this atmosphere... Um, is 90 times heavier than Earth's atmosphere. It is a much thicker, thicker atmosphere. We mentioned the pressure that probably crushed those uh, early Soviet uh, Venera spacecraft trying to land on there. Um, it actually extends five times higher off the surface, which is one reason uh, they were fooled back in, let's say, the 1950s, thinking the temperature might be similar because they were reading the temperature at the top of the atmosphere, not realizing that the atmosphere was much farther away from the surface than it is here on Earth. So they weren't comparing apples to apples. Anyway, I mentioned it has a, a jet stream, uh, just like we do here on Earth. It says severe, but it's really not too different than Earth's jet stream. And uh, I also kind of question this. It says sluggish winds at the surface. I don't know how we can say that since we've only landed there once for an hour back in the 1970s. So I don't know if the, how they came to that conclusion. Uh, but anyway, let's continue here. All right. First, really, another huge difference here is the composition of the atmosphere. And as you may know, the atmosphere of Venus is mostly carbon dioxide with nitrogen being a distant distant second 96 percent carbon dioxide all right now we're going to find out uh, that mars is very similar in that aspect which means really it's earth is the odd one out and uh, i'll talk about why that is in just a minute um, now first of all earth of course we have nitrogen number one and uh, oxygen number two but we're not expecting that on venus because remember earth did not have an oxygen atmosphere for billions of years life plants created um uh, oxygen microbes and things like that but they it created the 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 oxygen in our atmosphere um and so we're not at all surprised to not see oxygen in the atmosphere what we are surprised is that there's not more water vapor Okay, what happened there? It seems like Venus, if it started the same way Earth did, would have had lots of water at some point. Um, we have to answer that mystery as well, and we'll try to do that. And I've already mentioned that the clouds actually have, we see clouds of sulfuric acid, um, which then by extension, we know that it must rain sulfuric acid as if it's not bad enough there at 850 degree temperature and this crushing pressure uh, now you've got sulfuric acid raining down on your head so it's a nasty nasty place at least for humans um, here's a picture of what venus would look like uh, without its clouds and um, you can see a lot of the river uh, the lava channels i should say there okay anyway <clears throat> we know I mean, this is just a scientific fact that, that carbon dioxide acts as a greenhouse gas, meaning that just like a greenhouse, the glass of a greenhouse traps heat, uh, carbon dioxide can act in that same fashion. It's actually very, very good at that, at trapping uh, infrared. Okay. Um, one result of having this thick, thick carbon dioxide atmosphere is that it spreads heat all over the planet. It's the exact opposite of mercury. Mercury and the moon both don't have a way to transfer heat from one side to the other. So you just have one side that's baking hot and another side that's absolutely freezing. Uh, but Venus is very consistent all over the planet. It's just consistently crazy hot. Okay, 800 degrees everywhere you go. Um, night and day at the equator, at the poles, it doesn't matter. You're not going to escape that kind of heat because it has that, uh, that thick blanket of air around it. So that's one lesson uh, that we get there that's kind of interesting uh, from Venus. Here was a recent discovery um, at its south pole, um, this uh, vortex, um, uh, kind of like a hurricane. And uh, the yellow dot there, by the way, is the exact south pole, uh, which again would be at the top of the planet. And uh, interesting, I, I, it seems to me like we have found um, so many storms at the poles of, of planets like Jupiter and Saturn and now Venus. So it seems like that's a very common uh, thing. We have a polar vortex here on Earth as well. So it seems to me like that's a very common uh, phenomenon. Anyhow, 
Let's talk about Earth's atmosphere. I already mentioned that we have a mostly nitrogen atmosphere. Uh, nitrogen is not a greenhouse gas, so it doesn't quite enter into the conversation for that reason. I mentioned oxygen, of course, coming from life. But what about carbon dioxide? Why, why don't, why is Earth sort of the odd one out? Mars and Venus have but by far um, a majority carbon dioxide atmosphere. Uh, well, there's one really key difference. Um, Earth has oceans. We kept our oceans. Those other two planets did not manage to keep their oceans. On Venus, they evaporated away. On Mars, they froze over. Uh, but because Earth kept its oceans, our oceans, a lot of people don't realize this. Of course, we have plants uh, to suck in carbon dioxide, which is great. But the oceans actually, uh, if, if I'm correct, I believe they actually suck in more carbon dioxide each year than all of the plants on Earth combined. So you have two huge mechanisms um, for soaking up the carbon dioxide. Now, by the way, one really bad result of that is that the oceans are becoming more acidic uh, for that reason. So that's another thing, and that would affect uh, sea life and so forth. Uh, but anyway, what happens to that carbon dioxide in the ocean? Well, eventually it gets um, combined into limestone, uh, calcium carbonate, I believe, calcium carbonate for limestone. Um, and it's locked up in there and has been locked up in there for a long time. For, so for billions of years, our oceans have been sucking up the carbon dioxide for us. And that's a really good thing uh, that we don't have um, that much carbon dioxide. Because if you released all of that carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide and so forth that's, that's trapped in the oceans, check this out. This is a pretty amazing statistic. Our atmosphere would be 98% carbon dioxide. Yeah, we'd we'd be very similar in that respect to Venus, and that would be a really, really bad thing. As it stands, we actually have a very small percentage of carbon dioxide at 0.037%. Now, for the record, uh, Earth needs some global warming. I mean, we need that, that, that blanket because uh, right now our average temperature is 59 degrees. But without that blanket, um, it would be freezing. I mean, the Earth would just freeze over. Uh, but unfortunately, of course, we're getting too much of it, too much of the carbon dioxide. Take a look at this. Uh, uh, well, I'm sorry. In just a minute, we'll take a look at the graph of, of what's happening with uh, carbon dioxide. Um, and we know, of course, it's going up and up and up. Uh, anyway, here's what we think happened on Venus, which is a, an important lesson. Uh, obviously, Venus is closer to the sun. So you're starting out. And I kind of compare it to you're baking two pies in two different ovens. And one of the ovens is set slightly at a slightly higher temperature. But that might make all the difference in how that pie is going to turn out. And that's what happened with Venus. Um, because just being a little closer to the sun meant there's a little more heat. Which meant you're going to evaporate a little more water. Now, the thing is that, that water itself is a greenhouse gas. So when you evaporate a little more water into the atmosphere... It's going to help trap a little more heat, which is going to make it hotter, which is going to evaporate even more water, which is going to make it even hotter. And you get this cycle, and we call that a runaway greenhouse effect. Now, we don't know this for sure. We don't know that Venus ever had just oceans of water sitting there. It may have just been too warm from the start to even have oceans that's a that's a really interesting mystery there uh, but this this possibility is really pretty terrifying that it went through this cycle uh, uh, until the oceans evaporated they kept getting a little bit warmer which evaporated more water and made it a little bit warmer and obviously we don't want to reach that that tipping point uh, here on earth and that's a real fear that a lot of uh, climate scientists have now that brings us back to one of the earlier mysteries in the chapter we said that we don't detect hardly any water vapor in the atmosphere of Venus. You'd think that the whole, you know, the atmosphere would be a lot of water vapor if it evaporated whole oceans full of water. So what happened to it? Well, here's what they think. Remember also, Venus doesn't have a uh, magnetic field. And uh, that makes a difference. It makes that upper atmosphere kind of a rough place. Uh, it's also closer to the sun, so you get more intense ultraviolet. And basically the theory is that uh, the water vapor was sort of destroyed. It was split up into hydrogen and oxygen. Now, Venus doesn't have enough gravity to hang on to hydrogen any more than Earth does. So hydrogen would just literally evaporate off into space. Oxygen, well, there's still oxygen there. It's just in the form of carbon dioxide. 
you know, and we mentioned uh, sulfuric acid in the clouds, uh, H2SO4. So there's oxygen there. It just combined with other things. So that is the theory, is that the water vapor was split up uh, by high energy radiation and so forth, and um, it's not there anymore. So it's, it's, the water is gone. That is the theory. So Venus is located at about 0.7 AUs. That's astronomical units. So about 70% of the distance that Earth is from the sun. And obviously that was enough for it to sort of boil over. Uh, Mars is located at one and a half AUs. So it was too cold, which means only Earth and our solar system fits in what we call the, the, the uh, uh, habitable zone of our sun. Okay, so that 0.7 AUs to 1 AU, that's where you have to be uh, to sustain an ocean. And uh, we're obviously the only planet in our solar system that was able to do so. And uh, now the question is, are we going to be able to uh, maintain what we have? So just very briefly here, um, you know, I think of climate change, I basically think of these three questions. Is there climate change occurring? Well, of course, even, even the skeptics will say, yeah, of course, there's always been uh, climate change, which is which is absolutely true. Uh, but the second question is, is it anthropogenic, meaning is it caused by humans? And um, the vast, vast majority of scientists uh, believe that's the case. And I mean, to me, it, it, it's actually not just that I've seen the, the data and the presentations and then, but, you know, it just it seems like common sense to me that human activity uh, would would warm up the planet. And then, of course, you get into the consequences and that's when you get into the economics of it and what should we do and what's fair for different countries and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to stay out of the politics and the economics of it, uh, but I will just say that um, that it's a serious problem. We only have this one planet. Uh, we really can't. Uh, we can't mess it up. We can't afford to mess that up. Um, here is is uh, something that, that's without question. Uh, the fact that um, we continue to just put out more and more and more carbon dioxide. And of course, a lot of that is from, you know, burning uh, fossil fuels. So um, that that's unquestionable right there, that uh, the amount of carbon dioxide keeps going uh, up and up and up and the, the ocean levels rise and they become more acidic and all of that. I mean, you, you can't really question uh, any of that. Um, Here's some data from, from ice core samples where they're showing how spikes in carbon dioxide historically have led to warm periods, as you see there in the gray. Those are warming areas. And then here at the end, this is the scary part. Bam, all of a sudden carbon dioxide just is going off scale there. So we've never dealt with this historically. We've never dealt with this much uh, of a change, a rapid change in how much uh, carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. Uh, that's the global temperature over last 150 years or so. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to go into this too much. I could just lecture all day just on this. But this is why we're moving away uh, from fossil fuels into um, renewables. Um, I've done a little research myself. Here I am at uh, here in Florida. This is our largest uh, solar plant near Arcadia, Florida. And I got to go visit there and check out what they were doing, which was pretty neat. Um, we also installed a very large solar panel in our garden at the school. I help help run that and operate that. And, and uh, it's really fun, actually, uh, figuring out how that works and, and so forth and using solar power to, to run our uh, garden out there. So anyway, um, uh, but the bottom line is that... Um, you know, that's something that, that we can't take for granted that, the, you know, that uh, the science is there that uh, that shows us that carbon dioxide is um, is definitely causing climate change and humans keep producing more and more of it. Um, and so I just kind of want to end with that. I think Venus is uh, kind of an important lesson. Uh, you see what happens there in that hellish place. And maybe that's a good lesson for us uh, here on the Earth anyway. Hey, thanks for listening. Um, hope you've enjoyed the chapter on Venus.